Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha! How are you guys doing today? This is Jeeves here, your old composer here at the Decomposer Lounge, pulling back the layers and dissecting your favorite suggested tracks here from Patreon. This comes uh, here for a long time. I haven't done anything from Dream Theater, so I am looking forward to this. However, this is an oldie but goodie. Apparently this is 1994 um, from their album Awake, and this is called Space Divest. Um, you know, most of the stuff that I've done on Dream Theater has been instrumental, but I, I do know that there has been <coughs> one, I think, or two singers. I'm not sure. Uh, but um, I did look this up really quick briefly, and so this has got vocals on it, so I look forward to that. Thank you guys so much for your support, especially on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support and your patience as I kind of creep through the list. So let's do this. This is uh, 1994 Dream Theater from the album Awake Space Divest. All right. start man they really kind of like let this kind of classical vibe wind out on the piano piano sounded a little <clears throat> sounds a little like a digi piano um it, very bright and kind of uh you know it, it has kind of a <clears throat> a tone to it that kind of hangs out to the back end of it that's kind of bright and sizzly the pattern is is definitely classical style style pattern um, I am not really well versed on, you know, from what era or from what composer. It could have been more of a beethoven -y kind of uh, progression, it kind of feels like, but that's not my thing, so I, I just took a wild guess at that. <coughs> but they gave us that 45 seconds of just kind of meandering through those chord uh, uh, patterns to kind of get us into that rinse. And then when the vocals came in, what I really liked is the melody pattern was already kind of established by the left hand on the piano, da, 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 whatever, something of that nature. And that obviously, that is the melody that, that uh, you know, he followed as he was singing and stuff. So, um, and also it sounds, I, I was listening, you may have saw me kind of creak my neck and I was trying to listen. It also sounds like there is an acoustic guitar pattern in the, <coughs> in the back that's actually following the piano pattern. So there isn't anything that's a standout layer yet, except for those really, kind of trippy uh, soundscapey percussion things that have happened but I'm sure now we're in for something here because I, I felt like there's a, it sounded like there was a change coming up through here but I just wanted to stop and just kind of rinse on that just really kind of nice little glidey classical phrasing uh, to open this up and everything uh, so here we go Even when I hold you in my arms It's our last chance It's our last chance 
definitely has this full-on rock opera kind of vibe -ish. not quite opera but to me this sounds like this song is possibly in the middle of the disc somewhere part of the story arc of um, uh, of this particular album and um, because all the stuff that's happening they're really you know especially all the spoken dialogue wherever they bit that from whatever shows or or whatever they got that from <clears throat> this definitely feels and it also feels like it's like kind of a gap um, an emotional gap section of the, of the album song. So in other words, could have opened it up huge and powerful. And this is kind of that, that glide song in the middle of, before it takes you to another, you know, uh, series of, of heavier tracks. That's what it feels like. I don't know, because I don't know this album. But it definitely has that, like, more of a bolder Pink Floyd-ish kind of vibe. And why I say that is because the theater of the mind is, is fairly similar. You know, um, a lot of spaciness. There's not a lot of arrangements and layers going on there. It's really focuses around, <clears throat> you know, the pattern that the piano is playing, which is for everything that is a dream theater that I know of the most mellowest playing that this is compared to, you know, everything that happens, when, you know, when these guys are killing it, you know, with their instrumentals or other great, you know, songs that they've uh, released and stuff. So, but I can't help but, but say that it's got this kind of uh, theatrical aspect, well, dream theater, uh, but um, that it just kind of fits somewhere in the album that, that I'm not familiar with so maybe what that's why I'm getting that that five and just really quick circling back to the piano I, I wasn't saying that it was a digital piano um, I was just saying that the EQing and the velocity of the playing the consistency of the velocity just has a brighter than normal sound it could be a grand it just you know engineers can EQ pianos many different ways to get different sounds out of it it just sounds a little more brighter and a little more sizzly uh, that's it so let's uh, finish this up <laughs> Oh, 
That was a really nice ending for that. Now, you, I'm sorry, I, I've never ever done that before in the middle of listening to a track was to kind of break away, but I had to, I had to look it up while I was listening to it if this was a different keyboardist, and it was. Uh, uh, Kevin Moore, from what I understand, that's what it said here in the Wikipedia. Um, so, obviously, I don't know when Jordan Rudness um, joined the band and stuff. I'm not a historian of that nature. I'm just old guy to listen songs and I peel it apart, so I don't, I don't have a historical uh, reference uh, uh, outside of me doing homework before I do it, but then that's not the way I do things here. Uh, but it was very unique to hear uh, that this type of dream theater because I was so used to the more faster, bolder um, uh, dream theater. Probably, I think the earliest one I ever did was a 19 or 2002. I'm not too sure. I'd have to check my playlist. <clears throat> other dream theaters, but I really like this. But this was the most subdued track of uh, dream theater that I've heard. And I like, you know, and the thing is too is. There was something nice about the fact that I wasn't getting anxietied out by the incredible arrangements and musicianship. I don't mean that in a bad way, but when you listen to more progressive uh, dream theater, you know, there's incredible musicianship and riffs and speed and just, you know, just wonderful uh, pieces of powerful, you know, rock metallic theater style work. This was very much like, hey, it's coming on and I'm buzzed and now I'm coming down. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's kind of how I took it away. Very nice. I, I dug it. Very chill. And, I, and also the, the engineering did sound kind of 90s. And that's not a bad thing. It's just a cool thing. That, you know, when, you, when I do what I do and I listen to all these uh, projects and bands or, or, or artists and stuff, and because of my engineering past, I'm able to go, oh, man, I remember, you know, doing that on snares or doing this on it, you know, and especially, you know, aligning it with the date on the album. So anyhow... Uh, thanks for hanging out. This was a Patreon pick. I definitely appreciate your time and your patience. You know the, how big and fat that list is. Try to get through it as fast as possible. You guys take care. Have a killer day. Aloha.